<laughs> Do I look funny in the helmet? <laughs> well, good uh, Thursday afternoon, all. Uh, did a little work from home today. Never had the uh, chance to leave the house, so I figured with as fantastic as the weather is today, we're like low to mid 70s, clear sky, calm winds. It's just gorgeous out here. Uh, we don't get enough of these days in Houston. They are very, very few and far between, and they're only early in the season like this, so I'm not going to let it go to waste. I'm going to get out. I'm going to take the Cub out and just cruise some back highways, get a little bit of footage, find a park somewhere, string up a hammock and relax. Uh, I still don't have uh, my rack yet uh, or a backpack that's worth... Uh, much. I'll show you my pack later when I get off the bike, but I'm using the uh, uh, my GoPro Seeker 2 or Seeker backpack, whatever it's called. Um, and I strapped a little bit of extra gear to the outside of it, hammock stuff and all that, and uh, it's going to work out alright, I think. Um, I wouldn't say it's comfortable. I don't like having backpacks on me. I've already discussed that, but... Uh, in a pinch? Why not? So this will answer uh, the video uh, commenters that were asking about uh, minimalist loadout for backpacking. This pretty much covers it. Come on, Grace. She's a good dog. She waits for permission. Okay. Watch for cars, babe. I'm going to go. I'll be back in a while. Another YouTube uh, commenter that has uh, experience in the Cubs left me a note and he said the way to downshift uh, and throttle blip, he said there's a technique to it. So I'm going to try that out today and see if I can learn it. Uh, I was playing with uh, the throttle blip on downshifts, but I couldn't quite get the hang of it. It's just a timing thing getting a little better at it there it's not a traditional movement uh, like with other bikes where you've got a hand clutch uh, you have to have finer motor control on your foot your ankle to uh, slowly release that lever so it doesn't lock up the centrifugal clutch right away anyway just a learning curve I'm not concerned hey I got wet I'm not concerned about uh, the downshifts, you know, driveline lash wearing on it, anything like that. These Cubs are pretty much bulletproof. Uh, it's just my mechanical OCD not being able to shift it smoothly bothers me. And it's not the bike's fault, it's more my fault. I just don't know how to do it. There we are. So hold it down, and as you're releasing it up, blip the throttle. That's a yeah, that's the ticket right there. So it's a delayed timing compared to most bikes when you got a blip before you move the lever. Anyway, I'm starting off with pretty much a fresh tank of fuel on here. I got 1.5 miles on it from my last fill, and uh, I'm just going to take it out on some back roads. I might even head over to Stephen F. Austin. In fact, I think that's what I might do. I'm just going to take Highway 90 out of the town and uh, meander my way over to uh, Stephen F. Austin. Let's go hang out there for the day. I don't know, maybe hang for the night. We'll see. When I get out on the nice scenic roads and off of these surface streets, I'm just going to shut up and uh, enjoy the ride. I'll probably leave the camera rolling, but uh, we'll just listen to the wind and the uh, sound of the cub instead of me. It feels really weird with 25 pounds worth of stuff hanging off my back. 
I guess it's 25, I don't know. It's at least 20. We got all the camera gear, uh, camp gear, everything else in there, plus the weight of the backpack itself. It's probably, probably right at 20, 25 pounds. I'm sure that could be pared down a lot with uh, more moto backpack or uh, ultralight backpack specific type of uh, gear, but I'm not carrying any of that right now. I do have some fairly pricey uh, ultralight camp pack, uh, camping and backpacking gear, but uh, surprisingly it takes up a little more space, at least the stuff that I have, it takes up a little more space than what I'm uh, packing out today and I don't have a big enough backpack to really haul everything efficiently because I'm usually reliant on my uh, panniers and tail bags and things like that <laughs> I noticed that I'm gripping the bars too tightly with all the uh, weight on my shoulders no, missed the timing on that down shift. So most of this ride should be pretty steady state. I don't want to, you know, maintain a single speed or uh, RPM too long because the motor is still breaking in. But uh, for the most part, there won't be that much stop in this uh, trip. It'll be low speed, fairly steady speed uh, surface streets most of the way, and then. A rural highway I'll be going 45 50 something like that but it should be a pretty uh, efficient trip as far as the fuel mileage goes we'll see so my uh, CRG bar in mirror should arrive tomorrow Friday uh, at least that's what the Amazon tracking says uh, so I will put those on Friday or over the weekend these mirrors are just not working out for me um, hopefully my rear rack will also show up at the dealer tomorrow or possibly Saturday morning and we'll get those two guys installed the three if you're considering two mirrors we'll get all that stuff installed out of that and uh, that should transform this into a decent little commuter grocery getter run around or I was uh, exchanging notes with another uh, Australian viewer this morning and he had mentioned that uh, he was seeing the differences between the uh, USA and the Australian version as far as the uh, indicators, switchgear, things like that. Uh, I noted that when I picked this one up is I'd, I much prefer the European uh, signals. They're flush mount right on the... Uh, okay. I knew I heard a bike. Squidly. No helmet and a wide open pipe. Um, anyway, uh, the uh, flush plates uh, that are on here and the Euro signals, uh, and especially the tail light, I really like that look better than the US models. Uh, this is a dot requirement. Uh, we have to have the signals a certain distance apart at the outer edges, and uh, there's a certain a required amount of surface area on the lens of the uh, signal and I think the European ones don't quite meet that so Honda had to put these on there and I think these are the ones from the Neo Sport Neo Cafe bikes and uh, shouldn't be that hard to source them out of another market just order them out of the uh, UK or somewhere have them shipped in but I think with the, uh, the flush signals, front and rear, the different tail light, and uh, nix these mirrors and have the bar-in mirrors on here, this thing will look pretty slick. It's not going to be bad boy racer, but it will be very, you know, kind of, kind of, sort of cafe, quasi-cafe for quasi-motard. There we go. It'll be a quasi-cafe cub. I always know when I'm going about 40 because it's buzzy in the seat. 
you feel it in the pedal or the the pegs and the uh, and the seat, and then you get over 43 ish, and it goes away. Yeah, I got that one. Okay. Still haven't quite gotten the throttle blip on downshift with this one yet. It's totally new motor memory because you're used to doing it with the fingers. Multiple times I've gotten on the bike and I just instinctively reach for a clutch and uh, go to kick a side stand up. <laughs> the Cub has neither one. <laughs> Funny, I catch myself doing it. I've even seen it in the video a couple times going, oh, no, it's not there. I do want the side stand though. I think I've complained about that a couple times already. I'll complain about it again. This thing needs a side stand. As long as it's got the uh, ignition uh, interlock, you know, disconnect for when it's in gear, that's fine. I understand the kind of the rationale for not putting it on there with uh, some scooters, you know, because they're so lightweight, they'll just tip over or whatever, but you know, the lack of parking brake and everything, but yeah. None of that logic really makes that much sense because you don't have a transmission and gears to lock it in place anyway, so it's always going to free roll. Um, if you're on the center stand, yes and no, it's a little more stable, but if you're still on an incline, nothing's going to prevent it from rolling off of that center stand either. And in a lot of cases, um, anywhere it's hilly, let's use California for an example. Uh, if you're parking on an incline or the there's a big camber in the road or something like that, um, you can't use the center stand. Uh, you're going to have a hard time angling that bike around in such a way that it's going to stay on that center stand and not be tipping too far to one side or the other or rolling forward or whatever. Um, and in those cases, a side stand works better because you can kind of angle it, uh, you know, uphill a little bit and prop with a side stand. So I put the uh, Japanese Euro side stand on my Yamaha C3 XF50 and oh man, it just transformed the bike as far as utilitarian. You can jump on, jump off, you know, swing your leg over it, kick the stand up, go to check the mail or go to pick up a movie at the video box and you just lean it over. You, toss the side stand down, it kills the ignition, jump right back on, flip that stand up, hit the button, boom, you're gone. None of this hoisting up and down nonsense. The Honda PCX, the Forza, the Silverwing, and all those, they have both. They've got center stand and uh, side stand. Just more practical. But I'm sure there's some kind of cost savings involved and the bean counters got into it and said oh, no we need to chop these they're not required for that market we're not going to put them on okay kind of like with the Riker the lack of the uh, emergency flasher button come on man it's just a button how much could that assembly really cost five six ten bucks whatever just put it on there raise the price of the bike by ten bucks Same thing with the parking brake lock. It's like a $13 part or something like that. Just include the thing. I leave it up to everybody to go sourcing it, figuring it out, going through the hassle of ordering it and then figuring out how to install it. Just put it on the bike. Yep, reaching for fifth gear. There's no fifth gear. Constables and sheriffs all over the place. I've already passed three. And uh, going 40 in a 40 zone. Just slowed down a couple. Uh, 
All these people are ripping 50, 55 plus through here. I guess they feel like donating to the city. I don't. Besides, I'm on a Super Cub. I'm just gonna chill out. I always wonder if I'm lugging this motor, just tooling it along in fourth gear. Slowing down for lights like that and then accelerating away without downshifting. I don't think it'll hurt it, but be kind of cool if there was a little uh, bar graph tack on here just something like a, around the ring of the uh, speedo kind of let you know what the revs were doing so how do I like the backpack so far eh. dude um, I don't like it <laughs> I can use one in a pinch, but I really hate them. Now, if I got a, a proper moto backpack, I might change my mind. Uh, I've had a couple in the past, but I never really used them much. Uh, one or two of them I even returned after a short time because I just couldn't adjust. Uh, there are a few out there that look like they might work out okay. I've never tried the Krieger. Uh, it's always got high marks from all the owners and reviewers out there. Um, Ogio, Ogio, however you say it, uh, they have got a Mach 3 or Mach 5 or something like that series of backpacks that are uh, streamlined, hard shell. They just look big to me. Um, I looked at them over at one of the motorcycle shops and they've got a neat design and they actually have some good interior design as well as far as the compartmentalization and little pockets and zip areas and uh, laptop sleeve and all that so they they're specialized for the job so they might work okay I just didn't really want this giant turtle shell on my back kind of like you know this GoPro uh, backpack is okay if you don't have it loaded up too much but once you get close to capacity on it it starts getting that turtle shell feeling size wise it just gets bulky I really don't like the pulling on my shoulders all the time. Said it before, say it again. I'd much rather have the weight on the bike and down low instead of on me. Although, the counterpoint to that is uh, if you've got it on your back, there's nothing to unstrap from the bike when you get off, if you're doing quick commutes or if you're a courier or any, any of that stuff, uh, having it on your back is definitely an advantage because you're not attaching and detaching anything from the bike or loading and unloading anything. It's already on you, so just step off and walk. There are advantages. The only other thing I've noticed uh, that I may want to change on the Cub eventually uh, and before anybody jumps my ass about it, um, what are you honking at, man? Uh, before anybody jumps me about it, I know this isn't a performance bike, but the front uh, brake is very, very squishy. Uh, there's not a lot of feel in that lever. I mean, you can see I'm, this is initial bite right here, and then it just keeps squishing. Uh, so I'll probably throw a stainless steel line on the front of this thing. I don't know if it's going to be a set of two lines or where it's going to how it's going to break up with the ABS pump and all that because you're going to have the master cylinder down to your pump body and then there's going to be a, a sub line that goes from the pump body down to the caliper so there might be a two piece set it would just be nice to firm up that lever a little bit yeah so besides the fantastic weather this is really just an exercise in uh, taking the cub out to put a few more miles on it, get it past the break-in period so I can start wringing it out a little bit, ragging on it, going places I want to go without worrying about the uh, break-in period anymore. I think uh, after today's little jaunt, it'll be getting up close to the 300-mile uh, mark. Should be getting there. It's 
somewhere thereabouts. Uh, I'll take it over, have the first service done on the dealer's ticket. And I don't remember for sure which way to go. I think I go right. Um, anyway, I'll have the dealer do the first service. That way it's on the uh, warranty card and all that. Uh, speaking of, when I go over there, I need to pick up my extended warranty. I went ahead and had them write that up. I just haven't gone over to seal the deal. So hopefully I'll do that tomorrow. Anyway, um, get that first oil change out of the way. Uh, I have a uh, gold plug coming in, so I'll just have them put that in at the same time. Of course, I'm perfectly capable of doing that maintenance myself, but uh, the first couple, I always like to have the dealer do it. That way it's on the VIN. If there's any kind of a issue with um, mechanical, you know, recall, uh, warranty claim, anything like that, it shows that it was maintained. Probably ought to check my phone, make sure I'm going the right way. I'm not taking the highways, so I'm relying on the surface streets here, and I don't recall the way out where I want to go. I know the way coming back. I don't know the way going out. 90 should be right up here, I think. Unless I'm already north of it, which is possible. Yeah, I think I'm north of 90 already. Rot row. Nobody coming? Fine, I'm going. Check the phone here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, surprisingly, I was going the right way. I haven't taken the uh, surface streets to get there in a while. So I uh, was a little unsure of myself. This is exactly the way that I used to go. So this is a pretty minimalist trip. Uh, it's not full minimalist. Uh, one of these days soon I'll go ahead and do a bare bones minimal scamping trip and that'll uh, maybe appease the curiosity of those that have wanted to try it for themselves and never quite in, gotten around to it or didn't have the gear to try it or the gumption to give it a shot whatever uh, I've done it a number of times just full minimalist only uh, a bivy or a hammock and uh no accessories, no non-essentials, no electronics, uh, and I'll take one of my scooters out. It's very similar to bike packing. Uh, you have to think about every ounce and make it count. Uh, but I'll take my little uh, C3 scooter out. Everything fits under the seat. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I can get a pretty complete camp under the seat of that C3. Uh, either a hammock or tent, cooking, food, the whole shooting match and I don't have to put a backpack on or anything it's all under the seat uh, anyway I'll do that sometime soon this is going to be a little less than minimalist uh, or I should say a little more than minimalist I'm not quite minimalist in that I'm bringing electronics and I've got a camp chair and some other stuff for creature comforts sorry dude I guess I'll speed up to 45 somebody behind me wondering why I'm going 35 I didn't see the speed change. There we go, 45. Just comfortable, not doing too hard, pressing it too much. It's like we have a fire up ahead of us here on the end of this road, a couple miles up.
this is what I call a relaxing ride. Just back roads, no traffic, kind of going into the wind. The wind was st uh, totally calm earlier. It's picking up a little bit now. But doesn't matter. This is a slow road. I'm not fighting the wind and traffic at the same time, so it's all good. There's quite a, it doesn't show up on camera, I'm sure, because the camera tends to flatten things out, but uh, a lot of these pavement ripples and seams here are pretty significant. They're you know, a couple inch uh, rise in depression. The Cub's doing fine over all this. It's really not even jarring me too much. Now that guy turned off, cool, I'll slow down. Again, I can't see squat behind me. A few more speed up coast down runs. Help break this motor in a little bit. I want to make it last for a long time. I don't want to have to dig into it and rebuild it. Because if I do that, I just know that I'm going to modify it and uh, end up putting a big bore or doing something stupid that I don't want to do. Somebody else flying out my butt. I'm gonna wave this guy by me. I don't want to go fast. He can go fast. gas whoa real strong like Ooh, an open gas pipe over here yeah I'm having trouble getting comfortable with this backpack on my back it's pulling me back and down not as comfy for sure Speaking of uh, comfort, at these speeds, you know, 40, 50, uh, windscreen isn't really necessary, but uh, even on my little C3, it doesn't go over 45 to 47. That's all it can do. And I noticed a huge difference uh, on it when I put the little stubby tombstone windscreen on there. Uh, it just takes all the pressure off of your arms and your chest. So I'm going to put one on this. Uh, I want to find something that looks right. Uh, it's going to have to be like a half high, you know, just a little stubby of some kind. Can I go? Um, it won't be big, but just something to break up the air on the chest. I'm thinking, you know, the camera is lower than my eyeballs, so, uh, but maybe about that tall. Something, yeah. Yay high, just to break up the uh, the airflow across the chest, and uh, it'll make this pretty much all day comfortable for cruising the twisties. Oh, and I forgot, I added my uh, cruise control. I've been avoiding using it because I don't want to just sit at a steady RPM too long. But I put the little Go Cruise on there, so that maybe some panniers, a little stubby windscreen. You can just cruise this thing on the back roads all day long wind is pulling me to one side. I'll get my little mods done to it and uh, ride it up to Austin for one of the events up there. Do a moto camping on the Cub. It's going to be moto camping today, but not really a destination event. Just a pleasure cruise.
truck's coming up behind me fast. I'm trying to keep an eyeball on them. Wave this guy by, let him go. that high RPM too long until I get this thing really out of uh, break-in. Of course it is a Honda and it is a proven motor that's been around forever and ever and ever but you know, still I like to do the break-ins by the book. Uh, I'll break them in a little hard sometimes just with uh, you know quite a few successive bouts of uh, wide open throttle short bursts and then a lot of coast downs and things like that, but I, I don't like to just ring them and leave them there for very long until they're fully seated and broken in. I've only got a couple more miles to go on this before I turn on 359, so I'm just trying to bide my time here. this guy to just come up and pass me but he's just hanging out Got eight car lengths back better than being tailgated but I don't really want to maintain that speed hey that was a big bug on the helmet I think I had my visor down narrow tires on this thing uh, kind of catch grooves a little bit and squirm it's not bad but it does squirm yeah that guy gave me a wave and a nod that was nice I've spoken about those folk in the past try not to name them out by name but the uh, how shall we say, the larger uh, V-twin cruiser uh, crowd. <laughs> they don't usually like to uh, be nice to people that are not on their same flavor of locomotion. I don't know if that's because they spend a whole lot for their bikes and they think everybody else is riding a cheap bike. They really know the rationale behind it. I wave at everybody on two or three wheels. We're all out here doing the same thing. And in my book, the people that are doing this right here, whether it's a retro bike or just a small bike or a small scooter, those are the guys that really deserve the nod because <laughs> they're, they're roughing it, especially with retro bikes. They are analog, full analog. There's uh, no fuel injection, no nothing. They're not necessarily polished or refined by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, it takes determination and a certain mindset to ride those bikes. You gotta be ready for the problems and the, you know, the side road wrenching and all that. It's just part of the game. And then the guys on really small bikes, you know, small displacement stuff, They're probably doing it out of one or two reasons. One, that's all they can afford. Or two, it's the challenge. For me, it's the challenge. I've obviously got plenty of bikes. I can ride what I want. But I like riding the smaller bikes. It's just more fun to me. I don't know why. They're, they're minimal. They're not as fuel thirsty. They're not as fast. They don't get you in trouble with speed at the blink of an eye. And uh, it's just that the challenge of... Uh, doing something on a machine that may not necessarily be what it was intended for.
somebody coming up, but they're really far back. They don't want to. They don't want to go fast either. They just don't know that I'm going to be going up and down and up and down. right around 50 miles an hour this thing is just really comfortable uh, it kind of settles in it's a happy speed and it just goes it doesn't have that vibey uh, nature that it has right around 40 and it's not wide open so you don't feel like you're wringing its neck with that mechanical sympathy in there where you, you feel sorry for the thing it's doing okay I sure wish this guy would pass me and let him go. How about that? Just want to pick up a nail or something over here on the shoulder. Yeah, I got a whole queue of cars back there. Of course, I wasn't holding them up. It's that guy. He wasn't even close to me. second. I'm still running with my brights on. I always do that on most bikes anyway during the day, just extra visibility. Uh, but I do want to put some uh, little running lights or uh, conspicuity lights on the front end of this guy just to give it a little more presence because she's pretty tiny. A lot of surface area on the front and uh, only one little headlight. Had a little dust devil going across the intersection there. I don't know if it showed up on camera. I think I'm going the right way. These are some of the wildflowers I was talking about the other day. These uh, orange ones that are popping up. We have the blue bonnets, which are the state flower. Uh, and then we have a lot of... Uh, and these are just regular, you know, weeds. I don't know what they are. Uh, but we have a lot of these yellow and orange and uh, almost like a purple-colored uh, wildflower that are, I think they're seeded out here on the sides of the road. And they all bloom around this time of year. I think it's a little early for the blue bonnets right now. They're really pretty. See, here's some purple. I don't know anything about flowers, so I don't know the names of them. It's really pretty though in the spring. There's some more. There are the orange ones. A lot of bugs out today. <laughs> Getting some pretty good roadkill on my visor. Hearing a lot of loud thunks on the helmet shell. Yeah, the cub is handling fine. It's me that's weaving around because I'm my shoulders. I'm being pulled back so much by this uh, backpack. I'm, I've got too much pressure on the bars. I need to hunch forward. But the bag is fighting that. 
At the same time, my butt's getting a little numb uh, from the seat. I don't know if it's my seating position or the seat is just pretty hard. Um, I noted that in my first ride review, it's a very firm seat. So I think for extended highway duties, I'll probably uh, get a small air hawk for it. And that'll raise the seat height a tiny bit, but not so much that it's gonna be burdensome. I'm a short guy, vertically challenged. I have a uh, about a 29 inch inseam. So with riding boots on, my inseam is maybe 31, 30, 31, somewhere in that range. The seat height on this is right around that. And it's narrow, so you're not really uh, having to bow your legs out too far. This really is a nice highway. son and I have come out here on the sport bikes a few times and when we're lucky enough to not be queued up behind slow traffic, rip through here pretty good, have fun. It's not a fast highway, it's just 55 miles an hour, but uh, you can push 10 over, maybe 15 over in some of these spots, sweep through these corners at 65, still a good time enough g-force and cornering load to make you feel like you're doing something coast this thing down a few more times oh, we've got a big truck coming up behind me he's moving too I'm just gonna pull off here where it's good to pull off let him go by I think he's cooking. He slowed down when he saw me on the side of the road. I'm not gonna pull out in front of you. Oh yeah, he slowed way down. He was cooking I missed it just a second ago when he came around that corner. Yeah, my butt's going numb. Of course, it doesn't help that I've got 20 or 25 pounds worth of backpack on me. lens is clear. All these bug splats I've been taking, I could have had one all over the camera and wouldn't have known it.
wave this guy by. <laughs> there are big bugs out here today. Big, juicy, healthy bugs. Keep getting these massive splats on the helmet. I'm going to use the cruise control, relax my hand a little bit. Yep, we've got two more cars coming up on me fast. After I have this thing broken in, I've got no qualms about just pinning the throttle and leaving it there. But while it's still fresh, I'm going to try to avoid that. so I don't need it. It's closed at 10. I don't know for campers it's not. Oh, my butt. Yeah, I think it's either the, uh, the backpack weighting me down or the seat is just too hard. My butt's... Uh, telling me about this 45 minute or hour long ride here so the uh, cannonball will definitely need a uh, better seat says okay well, we're gonna stop right here <clears throat> all right Ooh, the gnats are heavy out here right now at least up here by the uh, office Oop, not a scooter. First gear. All right. He uh, gave me bad news when I checked in. He said that my spot is taken. My favorite spot. But we're going to go back here and see if there's another one around there that works as well for me. And I'm going to set up the hammock and hang a while. I'll show you my pack, kind of what I've got on on my back right now what my minimal loadout is for hammock camping i did want to try a new hammock that i bought uh, it's an rei flash hammock system 
but it's going to get down into the low 40s tonight, maybe a little bit lower, and I need an under quilt. And that particular uh, hammock, I don't have an under quilt for it, and I don't think REI makes one. Uh, if they do, I might consider purchasing theirs, otherwise I'm going to teach myself to sew and uh, make an under quilt set up for that thing. Because it's a nice compact system. Uh, it's a full blown sleep system. It's a hammock with a bug net attached that rolls off if you don't want it. Uh, it's not your traditional gathered end hammock. Uh, it's a little more of a spreader bar type, but it doesn't have a spreader bar. It's, it's an unusual shape. You'll have to see it. I'll do a review on that. Um, but it works pretty well, and it comes with its own uh, suspension and a rain fly. So it's a very comprehensive little kit. And I picked up two of them uh, around Christmas time. REI had them on clearance. They were 99 bucks instead of, I don't know, 200 or 229 or something like that. And I thought, you know, I'm going to give them a shot. I've hung it at the house a few times, and I like them. It's a neat little setup. Needs a few modifications and a few add-ons, but by and large, I think it'll work well for the most part. Okay, so if I recall correctly, it's over here. Yep. They've got uh, screened-in shelters. They've got full RV hookups. They've got everything here. Yeah, those people are in my spot. Man! That's my spot. Get out of my spot. That's the best spot in the park right here, in my opinion. Yep, that is my spot. These trees right in the middle make a perfect uh, arrangement. Uh, there's four trees right there set up in a diamond formation that uh, are great for hammock. But one of these looks just about as good. Let's see what this works like. And again, I don't have a side stand. I can't just kick the side stand and jump off for a second. I gotta stop the bike, put it on the center stand. It's annoying. Those are too close. These are too close. These are gonna work right here. This is perfect. Yeah, this is gonna work a treat. Oh man, yeah, the gnats are thick. Glad I brought my mosquito net. Oh, <laughs> gnats are really thick today. Oh, that's cool. I didn't notice that. It's got a little parking light uh, LED in the middle when you get off of it and leave the ignition on before it arms itself. That is cool. Okay, so this is my spot. I'm going to take it before somebody else does. There may be others in here. I'm going to drop the pack, go wander around a minute. Uh, Got a big old spider web there. As long as that spider doesn't want to bite me, I'm okay with him. Um, God, these... Oh my, I don't know if you can see them in the camera. These gnats are just swarming around me. They must like the smell of this... Uh, the dead bugs on my helmet. Maybe it's this water over here. I'm going to have to do something about that. So this is the pack, as configured. It's the uh, Seeker backpack, and I just used one of my uh, cargo straps to kind of keep stuff on it. These things aren't free-floating. Uh, they are carabinered on through the uh, front uh, notches uh, in the bag. And then I just used the... Uh, woof, bucks. I used the... Uh, cargo strap to kind of keep them from flapping around, but I've got everything there. Uh, this is the under quilt. Uh, this is the full hammock system here uh, and a tarp. So we'll see what it takes to set it up. I'm going to set this guy down here and just leave it here for a minute. I don't think we've got any uh, people that are going to take my stuff. It's pretty empty in the park today. Ugh, yeah, I'm going to wander around and see if there's a spot with a few less gnats. 
the GoPro get camera battery finally died. That's amazing that it lasted that long. That was pretty much an hour long ride in. Um, I swapped out the battery with another one that's not quite full, but had a little more. I'm gonna take a, a ride around here, see if I can get away from these gnats. It's pretty intense. There, it's just thousands and thousands swarming all over me right now. I don't know if it's uh, the smell of my helmet and all the road carnage on it or what, but I need a few more of those guys that just flew by me, a dragonfly. I'll hunt those things down and kill them. Let's see what that spot looks like. Got a couple trees that might work over here. Now it's a bit of a long stretch. There are a lot fewer gnats over here though. They haven't found me yet, I don't know which. Looking for spots that have trees spaced about the right distance. That's a dead tree, that's dangerous. Over here might not be bad. How's that? They have uh, water at these sites, but no power. Yeah, these two are way too far apart, and these two are in a similar situation. Oof, a lot of gnats over here too. I think it might just be gnat season. It's not a very pretty campsite, but it's got a lot of properly spaced trees. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm waiting to see if the gnats swarm me here. I've got a couple buzzing around me, but not as bad as it was a minute ago. I'm sure it won't matter where I go, they're gonna find me. Yeah, they're coming. Well, this is, oops, I guess I need to be in first gear. This is a good spot. Not very scenic like the other one, but it's a good spot. 71. That one's not bad, but the trees aren't spaced quite right. Unless I want to sleep over the picnic table. Anywhere in here is going to be Nat Haven. Yeah, there. That's a great spot right there that they've got. I've stayed in that one two or three times and I really like it. Seventy-nine. That one's not too bad. I don't really want to be around right on the corner here though where all the traffic goes through, so I'll skip that. Shelters. I'll go drive through there in a few minutes. I need to pick my spot and tell them where I'm going to be. So 71 is not bad. I'm not going to have anybody next to me. Not that I'm antisocial, but I don't really want the noise. Yeah, 71 or over there where I am. And I'm just going to cheat and drive through. Yeah, there's definitely more gnats over here. More than I want to deal with, let's put it that way. Let me just leave the bike over here. I'm gonna grab that backpack and go over there and set up on 71 before somebody else grabs it. And I'm just doing a, uh, a 
on one night stay. I'm not planning on camping multiple nights. So it's just kind of a spur of the moment deal. The weather's too nice to pass it up. Uh, normally I would bring cook kit, water, all kinds of stuff with me. Uh, these sites have water for you to do your dishes or whatever to filter and use this potable water, but uh, I don't have any of that gear with me today. Seventy one it is. Now, in this kind of surface, I wonder if the cub will uh, take to that. Not really supposed to be parking in here anyway. They they complained at me for parking my uh, XT two fifty up near my campsite. Whoa! Um, so that I needed to park it way back on the pavement, which was odd, but I get it. I'm trying to preserve the grounds. Okay. So I'm going to start setting up here and then go tell them that I'm in 71. Mm, gnats really are pretty severe today. All right, I'm going to settle this down and uh, try to get a tripod set up for the uh, time lapse and get to it. <laughs> 